Hello, I'm John Smizer. Uh, living here in Southern California, I gotta tell you, I really like the weather. I just visited my family up in the Pacific Northwest and it was cold and snowy and oh my, it's nice to be back home. I was uh, thinking about today as we are going to share together in God's Word and I was remembering some of the events in my younger life. My uh, um, father worked a job that didn't allow him to come to watch, uh, in fact, any of my sporting events when I was in high school. And I kind of missed that a lot. And uh, I know my mom was there at, at different times and everything, but uh, I know how I had really wished my father had been there to to see what, what I was able to accomplish. I wasn't a great athlete, but I was a, I was a participant and I, I enjoyed participating in sports. So I set myself a, 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 a concern that I would be at my children's uh, sporting events because uh, for them to be able to look up into the stands and see their dad and mom and, and just be able to be encouraged uh, was, was a, an important thing I felt I needed to do for them. Today we're going to look at the uh, uh, scriptures in Hebrews chapter 12, wonderful passage, as it gives us understanding of who's watching us, where, when we are working at the journey we're taking with the Lord. I pray as you have taken this month as we're looking at the book of Hebrews that you will have gained great insight to the truths that God is going to do some wonderful things through Jesus Christ in our lives. So let's go to the Word today. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Here it is today, Tuesday, March 26th. We're looking into a, a passage of scripture that I just love. It, it's instructive, it, it directs us, it gives us encouragement. That's what bi the Bible does for us. Now, there are certain words in the Bible that I love that kind of give us direction and understanding and, and enhances the, the truth that God's putting forth there. In our passage today, it has one of those words that I truly love. It begins here in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, therefore, therefore is always pointing back. It's looking at what has gone before. 
So what was before chapter 12? Good, you're right, chapter 11. And if you recall in chapter 11, it's that hall of faith where people were spoken about and how they trusted God, how Abraham, he left his land and he was willing to sacrifice his son and God was faithful to him. Then we see Samson and Rahab and others who on their journey, they had faith in God to give them what they had need of. And so out of, therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses, those who are watching us, let us, it goes on to tell us, what are we to do? It's we're to do two things. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so in, easily entangles. Now, you're familiar with the stories that if a runner was going to run back in the biblical days, he would either tie up his long robes because the robes they had were flowing. He would tie them up and cinch them up or else in the Roman games, he would just take off his clothing. Just He would run uh, a la natural just to be able to run the best race possible. So there's two things here that Hebrews is uh, in challenging us to set aside those everything that hinders us. Now this isn't so much as sin, but they're things that slow us down. Let's say if you had a uh, race to run and you were wearing some uh, overalls uh, and you had your pockets full of rocks, that's maybe not a bad thing to have, but it sure isn't gonna let you run the race. And so here in Hebrews it says, set off those things that are gonna hinder you from running the race. And it goes on to particularly the race that the Lord has set before you. Now, for me today, some of those things could be good activities, busy activities, philanthropic activities that are doing good in our community and everything else. But is it hindering my focus on the things that the Lord wants me to do? It's not sin, but there is that, that slowing me down from putting my thoughts and my focus on the things of the Lord. And those could be hindrances in your life as well. But then it goes on to say, but there are those sins that so easily entangle us. Now the sin that, that I am entangled by may not be what you're challenged by, but there is that sin that reoccurs, that challenge, that, that temptation that will cause me to stumble. And in that, I will lose the race. I will not go where the Lord has set before me. Now, after we have set aside those hindrances and those sins, what are we supposed to do? And let us run. That's what we're to do. Get on the path. Go where we need to go. Run with perseverance. Here, when I was growing up, I was told the little story of the tortoise and the rabbit. And uh, the rabbit would run everywhere and he was fast, boy was he good. And one day the tortoise and the rabbit, they were gonna run a race. But the hare, the rabbit, was always distracted. He would run this way and he'd run that way. He was so fast, but the tortoise persevered. He kept on keeping on. And guess who won the race? I know, you already know the story. Of course, the, the tortoise did. So the laying aside, not being distracted, running the race that the Lord has set before us, run the race marked out for us, fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Jesus, the one who endured the cross, the one who went through um, slander, he went through rejection. He was beaten. He was uh, crucified. All of these things he endured for the prize that would be his, the ultimate thing that the Lord has set before him. And you're familiar with Philippians that the Lord, the, the Lord, the Father set him at the right hand and that all of creation would be his footstool. And with that in focus, 
he remembered that he could endure. He could persevere. Can you persevere? Can you continue on the things that the Lord wants us to be doing? I pray you will. In today's passage, the uh, second half spoke about discipline and how a child will be disciplined by their father. And the whole goal of that discipline isn't to be mean. It's a, it's a work in process. It's to uh, teach the child how to live life. In fact, the last verse of our section today says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. And the discipline that a father will give to his child is for training. And the discipline that God will give us is for the same thing, to train us. Because once we have gone through this discipline, we will see the joy that is beyond that. Pray with me today. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you that you are a loving God who does treat us as your sons and daughters who does dip, discipline us. Lord, uh, we pray that you would give us by your Holy Spirit the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the heart to receive that discipline in a way that we will grow and we will be trained in our Christian walk. Also, Lord, for those parents who are training their children, may they also see the value of discipline and guiding and training up those young people to live a life that is honoring to God, honoring to the family, and also that will be productive in their lives. Father, we pray that you will bless us and guide us since there's so many witnesses seeing us. Father, may we run our race to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen.